And back in the studio, these are actually my favorite two segments. I get to spend it with my favorite gal in all the world, Lisa Waters Lane. She comes in each week and just shares what's going on in her gardens, what she's helping customers, what she sees in the local gardens. And it gets a, a, a different perspective than just some guy that's some than just me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I listened to the show way early on. We, just, we this is, this show has been on for twenty years. Early on, like years two, I went started listening to the show. I'm going, God, it's so monotone. Just one guy, and I'm entertaining even to myself. Yes, you are. But uh, <laughs> I'm going. It's kind of flat. It's just one male voice over. Yeah. We need something softer. And I, it took me like a year and a half to talk you into. <laughs> Lisa is the ultimate introvert. She yes. doesn't want to get on and be in front of anyone. She's happy being behind the scenes and making sure you look good, which is what I love about you. But then she came on and the show has been better for the last 18 years. Well, thank, thank you. Thank you, dear. That's You're welcome. very kind. Well, it's true. Sometimes the truth <laughs> is kind. Sometimes it's sometimes brutal. It's not. <laughs> no. Anyway, what do you got for us today? So uh, I just want to say a shout out to everybody who came to our open house last weekend. Yeah. Uh, it was beautiful. The weather was beautiful. Yeah. The hot dogs were amazing. Uh, the vendors were there talking about their plants and, and just really giving us all an education. Yeah. On their different aspects that they handle in their nursery yards and um, we were busy. It was wonderful. It was really busy. Yeah. People were yeah. waiting to get out. It had snowed like four times right. that week. Bl 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 snow flurries. Right. And then I saw, I was worried. I'm going, Oh my gosh, mm -hmm. we got all this marketing. We loaded up with so many employees. Right. I wonder if anyone will come and the whole count, <laughs> the whole County caves. It was awesome. Yeah. So it was, it was, everything came together beautifully. And we thank everybody who came. You know, what was interesting. I heard a lot of feedback from the Saturday class. So uh -huh. at, at nine 30, we live streamed the class. Yeah. It was packed. Yeah. Uh, but I interviewed each of the, the growers mm -hmm. and, and these are nerdy folks. They are not used to, to retail. They're not used to people. <laughs> they rarely get to a garden center and talk yeah. to anyone. They just talk to plants, you know, plant, plants <laughs> and the people that grow plants. Yeah. And so I, I interviewed each one of them. There were mm -hmm. nine of them from compost to tree growers, to flower growers, to yeah. tomato growers, to native growers. And we, it was, re people really liked that open the curtains up mm -hmm. and let's see behind the industry. What, what right. really goes on? Yeah. I mean, Chris uh, Shipley down at Savano's nursery, good friend of mine for 22 years. Yeah. Um, he has his family owned a, a very, they basically all native plants that go in the Southwest, they grow them. Mm -hmm. And uh, he's going, yeah, I got several patents. There's this new thing coming up. We were, he was just teased us right and left <laughs> on uh what is up and coming? A new ver two new varieties of desert willows, new uh, yuccas. So he's yeah. developing these mm -hmm. new like these new plants, and then introduces them that we get to sell them. So yeah. anyway, it's just fun to, to hear that how they do it, how they come up with things. So yeah. yes, but big shout out, thank you to everybody yeah. who helped us with that. Absolutely. So what do you think? So I redid all my pots. So we have you sure on did. the front patio. What do we have like? 15 yeah. pots, something like that. I've stopped counting. It's, it's too discouraging. <laughs> oh, it's a lot. It's not discouraging. Anyways, it was time to redo them. So the, the plants that I had had them in them last fall yeah. had just, they were done. They did their thing and they were done. It was time to redo them. So it made me think about, you know, some tips and tricks that I can give people to redo their pots. Cause this is definitely time to get those spring bloomers out in there. Uh, we're out back enjoying our yards and it's time to redo those pots. So the first thing you want to do is pull out the dead or the old plants. Pull, pull, bring out your dead. <laughs> bring out your dead. Monty Python, oh my gosh. So a lot of my pots, I have perennials and annuals. So perennials come back every year. They may right. go dormant in the wintertime. Some do, some don't. But the annuals, they do their one big show and then they're done. So I was pulling those out, getting those out of there. Um, you want to make sure you get all the root mass yeah. out of there so you, you a lot of times when you start pulling things out you get this big clump of roots and you want to make sure you're pulling that out of there because it's just going to interfere yeah. with the new plants that you're putting in there so on my pots that i have my perennials in that i want to keep you know i pull out my old ones um i usually end up putting more fresh soil in fresh potting soil because that soil's been depleted it's been 
a lot of the minerals and nutrients in it have been used by the previous plant. So always refresh your soils. Um, the other thing is a lot of the potting soils are have peat moss in them. And when that peat moss dries out, it's, it's a challenge to really get it hydrated again. So you always want to make sure your pots are well watered. So get that soil nice and moist. Put your fresh soil in there uh, and get that nice and moistened as well. It's always a good idea to put in the Aqua Boost crystals because you should describe those. So what the are, Aqua Boost crystals are little polymers that um, when they get moist water to them, they swell up. Uh, and then they we also have they also have a lot of mycorrhizals in there, which help with root development. So make a stronger plant. But as as they just release a little bit of water at a time as they as, a, as they dry out. So they're just really helpful in our climate. Uh, just because we are so dry, we're so arid, and that sun can really start baking things later on in the season. So I always put my aqua boost crystals in. I always put a little bit of the all-purpose food in because that's that meat and potatoes. That's yeah. that big diet thing that they're going to be eating on as they grow. So it's really important to have that. There again, you want strong, healthy plants because that's what's going to get you through more of the hotter seasons that we get. So I always mix all that in there to take a trowel and just, you know, mix it all up. So it's nice and mixed and even make sure it's moist. And then the other thing you got to really pay attention to is the plants that you're going to be putting into those pots, your containers, make sure they're watered as well. So don't put a dry plant. No. And then put a moist plant into your, before right. you plant it. Mm -hmm. Can I make him track it? Yeah. So make sure you put that, that plant's been watered, even though you're going to be potting it and you're probably thinking, well, why do I need to water it? Yeah. It's just really important. You want hydrated roots going into that soil because if you put dry roots in there, they're going to start pulling that water out of the pot. So you're just kind of creating an issue you don't need to. So make sure it's nice and moist. The other thing I would say is when you put your soil in there, always put more than you think you're going to need. Yeah. Because, <laughs> uh, you know, when you, through the season, that soil tends to compact and move through. And the next thing you know, you're, you know, your, your flowers are like five inches down <laughs> from where you started. So I always start with more soil in there than probably it's going to look like, Oh my gosh, the water is going to overflow, but it's, it's really important to do that. Otherwise your plants are just going to seek down in there and you won't get to see them as much. Yeah. And then also, you know, I always play with them how I want them to look before I officially plant them in there. Even while they're still in their containers, I will um, organize them in my pot or display them how I think they should would look good. So I have that in my head first before I actually start pulling them out of the pots because you don't want them to be out of a container too long because they will dry out and it's just a little more stressful for them. So it's a good idea to know where you want to place your plants within that container. Plants are kind of like fish. <laughs> they can be outside in the air for a little bit uh -huh. and put them back in the water and they swim off. But right. if they dry out, hardly at all mm -hmm. it starts to affect their outer skin or there's outer roots right. and it starts to stress them out more. So mm -hmm. leave your plants exposed as little time as you can. Right. Right. Think of them as fresh fish. You just mm -hmm. pull out of the lake okay. and you'll probably have more success. We should talk to the fisher, <laughs> the guys out there. Ah! And, and that's an insult to all the fisher women out there. <laughs> <laughs> the other thing is when you pull them out of those pots, loosen up those roots yeah. because they've been growing in those, those smaller containers and the roots are kind of just going around themselves. Really good idea to loosen up. I always call it massage the roots. Ooh, I like it. Spa <laughs> treatment for your plants. There you go. So loosen them up so that they're no, not real tight. That'll help them root out better as well. And then uh, when you get them all done and potted, water with your root and grow because that's going to help with that transplant shock, uh, it's just a real mild fertilizer in there. It's a great product. Yeah. So I hit them with the root and grow and then I sit back and I enjoy Smell the my flowers. Yeah. yeah. So some fresh soil, mm -hmm. some aqua boost crystals, some all purpose plant food and water and men lastly for transplant shock root grow. You got you it. Catch it all. You were summarized? listening. I was. <laughs> I'm actually pretty good at that. Raising so many daughters, been married so long. I've, I've, I've gotten better. Oh, I thought you just learned how to tune us out. <laughs> yeah, well, sometimes. <laughs> okay, so we've got Harold Waters, an interview with him I dug up from a couple of years ago on fruit trees from up after this. So don't change that dial. Super interesting. Be right back after this.